reliable, versatile. Econoline. Your purchase of an Econoline abrasive blast machine represents a significant investment in your business. In the next few minutes, we'll share some assembly and operating tips that will help you capitalize on that investment. We'll also help you set up your shop and keep you blasting. For demonstration purposes, we'll be using our RA30-0 30-inch model, but the principles are the same for our entire line. Most Econoline blast cabinets are sold with a dust collector. That means you'll have a blast cabinet and as many as two other boxes with the dust collector components. Begin by prepping the blast cabinet. Remove the blast window and peel off the covering that protects the glass during shipping. Then bring out the sheet of clear window underlayment and position it between the gasket and the window. This flexible and easily replaced shield is designed to protect the window when you're blasting. The film is inexpensive, certainly much cheaper than a window, so don't hesitate to replace it when it's too etched for clear vision or if it allows blasting abrasive between it and the window. Replace the window frame and make sure the wing nuts are secure. Inside the cabinet, you'll also find a cardboard box that contains the foot pedal, a supply of replacement window underlayment, the pressure regulator gauge, the lamp box assembly, and a clear rectangular sheet of plastic to shield the lamp. We've designed the recessed lamp box to provide a protected light. That way there's less of a chance that you'll accidentally break or etch the lamps. Make sure the fluorescent tubes are firm in their sockets. Loose bulbs flicker. Remove the two nuts. Install the replaceable shield and lamp box in the cabinet and re-thread and tighten the nuts. Plug in the cord from the lamp box to a grounded 110 volt 60 cycle electric outlet. The foot pedal assembly is equipped with two hoses. If you ordered a machine that doesn't come with a regulator, attach the hose directly to the safety valve switch on the side of the cabinet. If you have a regulator, connect the left hose to it. All the foot pedal system connections use brass fittings, so be careful when using a wrench that you don't crank too hard or you may damage the threads. Using pipe dope or Teflon tape, thread the regulator gauge to the pipe elbow on the regulator. Turn the face so your operator can easily read it. Position the foot pedal on the floor so that the valve is toward the back of the machine and the slanted side is toward the operator. Connect the right hose to the brass fitting on the right side of the hopper. This feeds air to the blasting gun inside. You are now ready to connect your compressed air supply to the safety switch intake port. We need to talk about that air, the quality, pressure, and volume. Without a good air supply, your blasting results will be less than perfect. For our blast cabinets to work at their best, you'll need a minimum of 80 pounds air pressure. That's 80 pounds per square inch, usually said 80 PSI. But there's more to compressed air than simply pressure. Whenever you work with a liquid or gas, you must consider the amount or volume that flows in addition to its pressure. It's really not complicated. We've all had the experience of restricting flow to increase pressure. At your sink, you can restrict the opening to raise pressure. And if you don't have enough volume, you can turn up the flow. But a blast gun nozzle is a fixed opening. There's no way to make it smaller. And if you don't have enough air volume, you'll never reach blasting pressure. With a small compressor, you're maxed out. And you'll have to compromise on one or the other, volume, or pressure. Our blast guns come in sizes that require a minimum of 6, 12, or 25 cubic feet of air per minute. That all depends on the inside diameter of the nozzle and air jet. The larger the opening, the more air it requires, just like with the nozzle on a water hose. If you're in doubt about whether you have enough air, check your documentation for the air volume your gun needs, and then read the label on your compressor and read any other accompanying materials. 
As a rule of thumb, if your pressure drops by more than 5 PSI when you're blasting, chances are good that there's not enough air. Other recommendations include keeping your air supply lines as short as possible and making sure they're a minimum of one inch inside diameter. If you've checked everything else and you're still uncertain about the adequacy of your air supply, call your dealer or call our customer service department. And while it's true that quick disconnects are handy, they also severely constrict airflow. So if your air supply is iffy, take them out of the line. At the same time, look around to see how many other air uses you have on the line. A demand for pressure to supply some other machine or some other tool could have serious repercussions for your blast operations. Why all this fuss with the air? Well, let's take a closer look at the inside of your gun. This Venturi gun has three primary components. The gun body, the nozzle, and the air jet. Compressed air is pushed through the air jet, into the mixing chamber, and then out the nozzle. The air moving through the chamber creates a vacuum and draws abrasive from the bottom of the cabinet hopper through the siphon tube and into the gun. The siphon tube has two intakes, one hole drilled through the bottom of the V and the other at the end of the tube. The bottom hole must always be buried in your blasting abrasive. Keep 6 to 12 inches of abrasive covering the bottom intake and be sure to keep this bottom intake free from debris. The open end of the tube must remain above the abrasive. It allows the right amount of air to be drawn up with the abrasive and for that reason should never be covered. We still need to attach the dust collector. It's really a specially designed vacuum cleaner to suck up powdered abrasive. Most of our units come equipped with our 100 cubic foot per minute bag style collector. The vacuum hose for the 100 CFM model is packed inside the bottom barrel. If your dust collector is shipped assembled, you need to take the barrels apart to remove the hose and then reassemble the unit. Place the collared end of the flexible hose into the hole in the side of the dust collector bottom barrel. There are two air holes in the blast cabinet. Leave open the one with the baffle welded on the inside of the cabinet. It's the port for cabinet makeup air. Instead, slide the straight end of the vacuum hose into the dust collector port that's located on the right side or the rear of your cabinet. Finally, plug in the power cord to the switched outlet on the back of the light box. You're nearly ready to go now. Open the front of the machine and pour in enough abrasive to cover the bottom of the siphon tube from 6 to 12 inches. That usually means you'll add 25 to 50 pounds of abrasive. Your blasting results will be determined by the type of abrasives you use. There's one in particular you need to avoid, silica sand. And it's just the type of abrasive most people think of when they mention blasting. They even talk of it as sandblasting. But it's the wrong stuff to use. In the first place, silica sand quickly breaks down into dust that contains free silica. And free silica causes a lung disease called silicosis. You can imagine the health dangers to your workers and possible legal ramifications. And though we think of sand as cheap, it's not really cost effective compared to the recommended abrasives, aluminum oxide and glass beads. In particular, aluminum oxide is widely used for its cutting characteristic. Because the aluminum oxide is both hard and angular, it can quickly etch a blast surface. Aluminum oxide is our recommendation for removing heavy foreign matter, deburring, frosting glass, and lettering stone. Glass bead comes in a wide range of sizes and generally is the most popular abrasive used in blast cabinets today. Because of its round shape, glass bead can do a great deal of work without removing base metal or changing dimensions. There are additional abrasives ranging from plastics and silicon carbide to walnut shells, peach pits, and steel shot. Your blast cabinet comes with a chart that summarizes the characteristics and uses for most of them. Now you're ready to rock and roll. We would, however, recommend that you take a few minutes and review the troubleshooting chart in your manual. And we'd like to highlight some of the most common problems we encounter in blasting. The first we've already covered, insufficient air volume. The second we've also touched on, but it bears repeating. Moisture is the enemy of free-flowing abrasive. 
Dan can give you some ways to tell if you have wet abrasive. If you see a mist when you first start to blast, you have water in your line. If your abrasive clumps together like wet beach sand, you have water in your line. If your gun pulses and chugs, and believe me, you'll feel it, you have water in the line. If abrasive hangs up on your hopper sides, you have water in your line. If you have rust or corrosion show up on a piece that's been blasted, you have water in your line. The fix? It's easy. A water filter. You also need to keep an eye on the gun. It's just not possible to make one that will never wear, but here are some hints to keep that wear to a minimum. The air jet that powers the gun extends into the airstream that carries abrasive into the mixing chamber. That air jet will wear, and it will wear unevenly. The side that's down will take the hit. Every one or two hours of blasting, your operator will need to loosen the Allen head set screws and rotate the nozzle and air jet just a quarter turn. This simple maneuver will give you longest nozzle and air jet life and will protect the gun as well. Keep in mind that any time you see wear on the nozzle, there's also likely to be wear on the air jet. When you replace a nozzle, make sure the jet isn't worn or it can rapidly blast away a new nozzle or even the gun body and all it takes is a few minutes. Look what happened to this gun and nozzle as a result of an unevenly worn air jet. Both nozzles and air jets are significantly less expensive than the complete gun. Frequent and proper maintenance can save you bucks. Another maintenance hot spot is your dust collector. On a weekly basis, empty the canister and remove the filter bag, turn it inside out, shake it, and blow it out. The bag is even designed to be laundered. When you clean the bag, inspect it for tears. If you find even a pinhole, replace the bag or else dust will pass into the motor and that gets expensive. And if you're using glass beads, make sure you regulate pressure so it stays below 75 PSI. Otherwise, the beads shatter and turn to dust that's so fine it can pass right through the dust collector bag and into the motor. All abrasives eventually suffer from breakdown. They get used up. If yours is turning to dust, dump it and start fresh. And there are going to be times when you want to change abrasive. You've got a different job coming up. Here's how you do it. First, dump the abrasive out of the hopper into a sealable container. And if it's not too broken down and dusty, you may use it again as long as it hasn't absorbed moisture from the air. Then blow out your gun. Blow off the inside of the cabinet, the air pocket shield, the gloves, and blow the abrasive into the bottom of the hopper. And dump it again. When the cabinet's clean, add new abrasive and blast away. The human element also comes into play. Your blast operator needs to understand that keeping the workpiece at a consistent angle to and consistent distance from the blast nozzle gives consistent results. Some users think they need to see a heavy spray of abrasive coming out of the end of the gun. So they crank up the PSI, and that's a mistake. A blasting spray is almost invisible. It's better instead to focus on the blasting result rather than looking for a visible spray. Finally, keep track of what you're doing. Note the air pressure, the nozzle size, and the type and size of abrasive. When you're absolutely satisfied with your test finish, keep your written record of all test data for future use. We've covered a lot of territory, but everything we've talked about is in our manual. If you have questions, please call us. Here at Econoline, we're happy to hear from our customers.